Hey guys, so possibly the biggest frustration that you might feel as a top laner is your lack of map influence. Being so far away from the rest of the map, off on your own little island, usually limits your ability to have much pressure on the rest of the map. We'll be addressing how to deal with this feeling in a small video series where we'll talk about all the options top laners have when it comes to actually having game impact and increasing the odds of winning the game. The first topic that we'll cover in this mini series will be split pushing. And there's two types of split pushing. You can either split to enable yourself to hard carry a game or to help your team. We'll be covering the more selfish of the options in this video and talk about the more traditional split pushing where you're actually trying to get towers and play for yourself. Despite top lane being so isolated and normally seen as being a low impact role, split pushing is one of, if not the best strategies for hard carrying games. And why is this? Well, being so isolated does come with a benefit. Top lane is by far the snowballiest role in the game. Once you obtain a lead in top, it is very difficult for your opponent to do much about it. This is because top lane is filled with melee all-in types of champions who don't have many options once they fall behind. They can't push or CS from a safe distance, so it is very easy to punish them whenever they try to do anything. Even if you're a late game scaling champion, once you're ahead in top, it is very easy to push that lead. Because of this, you shouldn't become complacent with a small lead in top. If, for example, you got a kill and a couple of tower plates as a mid laner, you'd be quite happy. You could then have lane control and roam everywhere and win the game. Unfortunately, a small lead like that in top is nowhere near as effective, so you need to continue pushing your advantage to become strong enough so that eventually, no one can stop you. Therefore, the first topic that we'll cover regarding split pushing will be about itemization. It is actually the most important concept to learn when you're trying to split push and will allow you to become the monster that you are meant to be. During a specific game, if you decide that you will be committing to a split pushing game plan, it is very important to itemize specifically against the enemy top and jungle duo. Not only does itemizing against them help during the laning phase, but those two roles are the most likely to collapse on you while you split push. Therefore, itemizing specifically for them just makes sense. For example, let's consider the following enemy team composition. So that's going to be a lot of crowd control coming your way in teamfights. So in a normal game where you're looking to teamfight, you'd likely pick up Merc Dreads to deal with that kind of composition. But if your game plan is to split, you wouldn't be interacting with Alessandra, Sona, or Tarek very much, right? You'd primarily be dealing with Gnar and Graves. Therefore, building Ninja Tabby and maybe another armor item to facilitate your split push would be a much better idea. Alright, let's look at some real game examples. In this clip, our top lane expert is against Kled top and a Shyvana jungle. So he's opted to build Ninja Tabby and an early Glacial Shroud. Not only has this allowed him to have complete control in his lane versus the Kled, but even when Shyvana comes, she does absolutely no damage so he can easily turn the gank around and kill her. Let's take a look at another example from a Nasus game. Here, he's up against a Rumble and Ramus combo, so he opted to rush Merc Treads and also took the Tenacity Rune. Not only did he have the magic resist to deal with Rumble's damage, but with all that tenacity, Ramus's crowd control was completely irrelevant. With simple itemization, he's well on his way to hard carry in this game. So those are two pretty obvious examples of what to build. What if the enemy team has mixed damage though? Well, at that point, you'd want to itemize against what is immediately more threatening. Let's say that you've completely dumpstered a Vladimir top lane, but the enemy Lee Sin is 5 and 0. In that case, you'd want to prioritize building armor so that the Lee Sin wouldn't one-shot you. Or if you're confident in your ability to outplay and the enemy team doesn't have much to threaten you with, it's totally okay to just do your usual build and focus on damage. You only need to think about itemization if there's something that can actually threaten you. Split pushing top has a lot of different goals that you can choose from to accomplish. Certain split pushing strategies are going to be more effective on certain types of champions, but usually most champions can apply all strategies to some degree. The most obvious goal that people think of when split pushing is taking towers. This is an area where ranged split pushers will shine way more than traditional melee ones. Ranged champions have the advantage of being able to play in and out of tower range which enables them to poke out the enemy, forcing them to base, 
which can lead to some great tower damage or even the whole tower. Even scoring kills while the enemy is under tower is much easier for ranged characters because, as we said, they can go in and out of tower range with ease. Melee champions, unfortunately, have to actually fully commit into tower range to get any meaningful damage onto their opponents. This is usually difficult and has a lot of room for error, as if you mess it up, you can just die to the tower. Generally though, it's going to kind of just look like this. You push the wave, and they'll clear it from the safety of their tower, with you being unable to punish at all. It's not like ranged characters are just straight up better at split pushing entirely though, there are trade-offs to the type of champion that you play. Melee champions can snowball incredibly hard and excel at brawling when ahead, so they can start to look a bit like this once they get rolling, whereas ranged champions are a bit more limited in how they can fight. Melee champions also excel at a hit and run playstyle that split pushers often resort to. You'll likely be collapsed on at some point, and being a mobile champion such as Camille, Fiora, Riven, or Trindamir in this case, to run your opponents around is very advantageous. Every time that you're being collapsed on by multiple people is time that they're not farming, getting vision, or picking off your team. Try not to get too upset if your team isn't getting much done on the other side of the map. You're still generating value by wasting the enemy's time, and the more often you do manage to waste their time, the more likely that your team actually manages to get something done. Unfortunately, sometimes getting tower damage or kills while you split push isn't going to be very easy. For example, this game the Garen is building full tank making it very hard for Trindamir to pressure him. Another option available to you in this type of situation is to start taking enemy jungle camps. Like we stated, with proper itemization, you can eventually reach the point where you can start taking 1v2 or even 1v3 fights. Well, you can speed up that itemization goal by taking jungle camps, which will put yourself even more ahead and the enemy jungler more behind. But what if their camps are down and you're left with nothing to do? Well, if you're playing a champion with Sustain, such as Renekton, Aurelia, Riven with Death Dance, or again in this case, Trindamir, you can consider going for chip tower damage. As we said before, this Garen is building full tank. Top laners tend to do this when they fall behind because they don't want to feed over any more kills. But that can just enable you to completely ignore them and do whatever you want in front of their face. Then you can heal off the next minion wave and potentially do that again if there's still nothing else to get. One extremely common mistake that we notice when we watch players split push is not waiting for your team to have pressure. If you're pushing and your team is in base, you shouldn't be playing too aggressively since the enemy team can collapse on you for free. In cases like this, it is 100% fine to just AFK and wait for your team to get back out on the map. It does suck that you're not able to do anything, but it's better than dying for free and having to wait to respawn anyways. And the last thing that we want to touch on regarding split pushing is knowing when to exert pressure where your opponent is already hurting. In this game, SKT's Khan managed to take the bot lane inhibitor by being a beast and 1v between the enemy top and jungle. A lot of the time, people think that you shouldn't keep pushing a lane that you've already got the inhibitor in. But as a wise mentor once said, just sweep the leg. If you sense weakness, it's usually a good idea to show no mercy and keep exerting pressure there. In this game, bot lane is really vulnerable to Khan's split push because Karma is a weak wave clear champion and has absolutely no way of stopping him by herself. So he just kind of ignores her and takes both of the Nexus towers. This causes the enemy team to panic and send 5 people to stop him, and his team can also just take the top tower then. That's the kind of split pushing that everyone wants on their team. Alright, we covered a lot, so let's end things here. We'll very likely revisit split pushing as there's no way we could cover everything regarding it in one video. Stick around for next week's guide on how to split push to help your team rather than yourself, and thanks for watching.